Welcome everyone back to the Banger Bar for the launch of season two of Lockhorns, where every week we rip apart, tear, tear apart, annihilate, and try to put back together the heavy metal family tree. And you know what? As you can see, brand new set. Check out this menacing board we've created. We've got lights, we've got a logo, we've got horns. It's very, very exciting. For those of you watching this on the YouTube archive, a reminder that this show goes live 5 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday. And please, everyone, subscribe to Banger TV and help us build the first global all-metal channel. This week, it's obvious. Take a look. Death Metal, one of my favorites. I haven't taken off this pestilent shirt since I got it at Vakken. Can't wait to dig into this. And I know that many of you have been waiting patiently for this episode as well. And joining me in the studio is none other than Dean Arnold, a guitarist for Toronto's Primal Frost and of course the American death metal band Vital Remains. So before I bring him out, let's see Dean in action. Impressive work. We got a real shredder in the house today. Uh, some real authentic death metal blood to join me for this episode. So thanks for joining us. Thank you, um, Thank you. Give me a sense of how you got into death metal. Um, I was roughly, I would say, like 12 or 13 when I started listening to it initially. Um, firstly, it started with bands like Cannibal Corpse and DSI. You know, I, I just had seen stuff like that online. You know, and, and, I, and I just really had a liking to it, you know, pretty pretty much instantly. Mm -hmm. Because I've been into like many different kinds of metal like since I was like eleven or twelve, you know what I mean? But it, I, I never really ventured into into death metal specifically. Yeah. You know what I mean? As soon as I heard Cannibal Corpse, you know, Hammer Smash Face, you know, that YouTube video of Corpse Grinder windowing at that show, you know what I mean? I just I, I was just hooked since then. You know Corpse I mean? Grinder converted <laughs> us all, I think, just about you know, not everyone goes down the yeah. dark path of, of death metal like we have. So Definitely. what drew you to it? Why were you drawn to this very extreme end of the metal spectrum? Mainly just because it was really just something different, you know what I mean? Like, and, and it was nothing like anything I've ever heard before, you know what I mean? Like, and, and I was just so hooked to it because like the, the, the riffs, the heaviness, the brutality, the, the speed especially. You know what I mean? So many different factors about the music just drew me in instantly, you know what I mean? And then from there, that's what caused me to get into so many other bands. In the death metal style, in the black metal style, you know, and then of course eventually into other styles too, like symphonic metal, you know, black metal, folk metal, everything. You know, what I mean? cool. so it really, it really all stemmed from initially getting into extreme music. So you're as excited as I am, sure, basically. Yes. <laughs> and let's point out this guy is half my age. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so uh, we're gonna span the spectrum here, and maybe Dean will kind of uh, get me a little bit better acquainted <laughs> with some of the the, the newer uh, death metal sure. that is uh, going on uh, out there right now. Most importantly, Lockhorns is driven by the participation of all of you out there who care about this music and care about the stories we tell about this music. And joining us, we've got a truly global audience today, proving that death metal is really a global subgenre of metal. Okay, we've got Chicago, Ohio, Nebraska, Texas, Wisconsin. Uh, Germany, South Africa, South Africa <laughs> Croatia, Serbia, Colombia, Belgium, Netherlands, France, Portugal, and Romania. Any more down there? Oh, Bristol, the Griffin. Shout out to the Griffin, best metal brew pub in the world. My old stomping grounds and uh, Saskatoon. Let's not forget Saskatoon, you know, everybody. Um, so this is how it works. We're going to dive into death metal, and we want all of you out there to... Uh, Tell us your opinions. We just don't want to hear, you know, the band, where do, where's Pestilence? Uh, where's uh, this band? We actually want to hear why you think the band you love 
is uh, needed to be on the chart. That's very important. And if you step out of line, if you dare to step out of line, Lisa Latasur will ring this sound. She will cut you off. I will cut you off. In true hammer smashed <laughs> face fashion. And I'm gonna cut you off just to tell everyone we are working on the sound issues. I'm sorry you can't hear everything, but you will very soon. So yeah, season two, we've got a new look. We're trying out some new new angles. Lisa, you're gonna see her lovely face uh, now, not just the voice of Lisa from off camera. So uh, bear with us if uh, there's any technical difficulties as we go. This is a DIY show live from the Banger Bar. Okay. Gauge all the ravenous fans of death metal. Let's talk a little bit about what makes death metal death metal uh, from a sound perspective, from an aesthetic perspective. When we say death metal, what comes to mind for you? Well, personally, I would say it's just a kind of music that really just pushes all the possible boundaries that music can be, you know what I mean? In terms of its speed, its heaviness, its brutality, you know, just, you know, the sound of, of the guitars, the production, you know, like it, it's very different from traditional, you know, I'd say like top 40 music, you know what I mean? Like, or, you know, and anything in between that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it just pushes every boundary, you know what I mean? And, and, there, and there's no real boundaries. There's no end to what death metal can be yep. you know I mean? in terms of its heaviness and its speed, everything. You know I mean? And just to add to that, I think one thing that's forgotten about death metal is actually in the early days when a lot of these bands were coming up, death metal slowed things down. I mean, bands like Autopsy, for example, and Obituary sort of almost took metal and, and music in general to its slowest. Yeah possible point sure. where it kind of like it's the soundtrack to the world crumbling beneath your feet and i just think that's something that people forget about yeah, death metal. yeah because because it was never there was never really a genre of metal that played you know that slow before and that heavy you know of course there's do metal bands like candle mass and yep. you know, even black sabbath and, and what have you you know what i mean of but, but to, to play music that heavy Yep. And that's slow, you know what I mean? I think obituary and, you know, autopsy, you're going to say death too, you know. No band was really doing that before. Yep. You know what I mean? I think that's really something and, they brought to the table. And of course, yeah. talking about taking things to the extreme, when we think about the, the lyrical matter and the visual environment yes. of death metal, you know, this is really music that explores sort of uh, the, the ends of the earth, if you will. <laughs> uh, you know, obliteration, uh, mutilation, all these yep. beautiful topics. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, was that part of the draw for you I at all? Say, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? It's because like, no, genre of music before it had really delved into that level of gore, that level of depravity, you know what I mean? To have, you know, song titles like, you know, Cannibal Corpse, for example, Fucked With a Knife, you know, yeah. everything from like, you know, Necro This, you know, yeah. you know, Fuck This, Fuck That, you yeah, know what I mean? And everything in between, you know what I mean? Just at every level of, you know, gore, perversion, yeah. Depravity, everything. You know yeah, what I mean? like that was that was really never prevalent in well, any other kind. I think of you nailed people. it. You know, the well-known sociologist Keith Con Harris. Hello, Keith. If you're out there, has done some very important writing on metal, and he talked about death metal as that part of metal that really explores the ends of everything, not just sonically, but in terms of like the body and the world we live in. Like how how much can we destroy things yeah. without them completely falling apart? And uh, can't explain it, but I fucking loved it <laughs> and still do. So there we go. So we got some ground rules very briefly on, on death metal. The next thing we need to do, and we do with all of our genres, is we need to kind of establish the band that we would consider the legend or the forefather of this music, uh, who deserves to sort of be at the top of the food chain, if yep. you will, of, of death metal. So who's that band? Personally, I would have to say Death, you know, I think most people would agree with me on that, you know, because Death was the band that really popularized that style and they were one of the first bands to play in that style. Obviously, it's hard to pinpoint who was really the first to do what they did, you know what I mean? Yeah. But because Death built such a legacy and, and every album they've done throughout their career was such a classic in its own way, you know what I mean? Everything from Scream, Scream Bloody Gore to 
the sound of perseverance. You know, every album is great. And it's yeah. like, you know what I mean? I, you know, there's going to be a lot of personal anecdotes in this episode. I'm going to apologize in advance. I remember the early live shows with Cam Lee on vocals for Death. This was, I believe, even before Chuck Schuldiner had picked up the microphone. And I just remember the sound of those demos was just so incomprehensibly brutal and heavy. And we wondered if Cam Lee was even human. But of course, you know, Chuck Schuldiner, if there's one guy that I think stands really at the top of the mountain of this style, it's Chuck Schuldiner, rest in peace. You know, obviously tragically passed away a number of years ago, but I think, you know, the musical legacy that he left is right before our eyes. Sure. It's a very impressive uh, story. Okay, so, but it's not just us. Uh, we spoke with Alex from Fallujah. Uh, just last night, in fact, at Between the Buried and Me and Devin Townsend, and he's got his uh, input on why death is so important. I, I think a lot of us wouldn't be here if it wasn't for death, and in particular the more melodic and progressive bands. But what, what set death apart was the fact that they really had this melodic and kind of, I wouldn't say it was a proggy sheen in the way that we say the word prog these days, but it really had this kind of like forward thinking melodic attitude that I feel a lot of death metal bands at the time really just did not have. Which is why death from that whole era of the, you know, the, the earliest and kind of first, second and third wave death metal bands, death is arguably my favorite because death understood the value in melody, or I guess Chuck Schuldiner as you know, a, a songwriter, realize how much more than in an aggressive genre that is so built on impulse, masculinity, and aggression, that melody can be so much more powerful than, and I think that they harness that better than any other of the early death metal bands did. So there we go, Alex from Fallujah and legions of other musicians um, uh, are sort of, we, we all worship at the altar of Chuck. But just before we go to the board, tell me a little bit more about what this band has, has meant to you as a musician. Um, to me personally, just because of the fact that, you know, Death has had so many great, great guitar players come through the band, you know, mm. Chuck himself was such a great player, but to have Andy the Rock and other players, you know, on certain albums, you know, but just the lead playing on albums like Human, for example, mm -hmm. you know, that was always a huge influence for me, you know, just to, just to hear that level of melody and that technicality, you know what I mean? And it wasn't traditional death metal soloing, you know what I mean? Like Morbid Angel, you know, Trey doing all this crazy shit, you know what I mean? It's all atonal, you know what I mean? It's just trying to be as wild right. as possible. But I think that that's one thing that really, Death really stood apart from us because of the fact that they had such good melodic solos on so many of their songs. Yeah, no some thing. beautiful really stuff uh, on, those, on those Death records. Okay, enough of us. Lisa, what's the board saying? It's hard to argue, isn't it, with this one? Here we go. Matthew Osterhout says the whole reason the genre exists is because of death. If you don't sound like death, then you're not death metal. Your tree should be Chuck's death symbol with a bunch of bands underneath. Okay, well, I think we're getting somewhere. John Engels, top of the food chain, death, absolutely. Connell Geheim put death higher, higher. We're running out of room. Arr, we're gonna just kind of overlap it on that. They're so important. And Bradley from Aggressive Tendencies had exclaimed, uh, uh, we should just remove death metal and just put death at the top. It's in the name. He says, pure death metal was realized with death. The impressive part is that although Chuck Schuldiner and crew essentially launched the genre with their early material, they continued to expand their sound and the possibilities of what death metal could include and be. So nicely phrased, these death metal, these people fans of like yeah. obliteration and uh, decapitation were all so eloquent. Uh, Lisa, okay, next we're gonna Look at what bands we should possibly remove. Yeah, we gotta make some room on this chart for yep. some new bands. Okay. Dean, what do you think? Dean, I'm on, Marth, definitely. I'm on a Marth. First thing that popped in my head. All right, so why part. why should I'm on a Marth be removed from death metal? Just from the death metal category specifically, because I never felt they were specifically a death metal band. You know what I mean? They what I what I think that they really became famous for was because of the fact that they combined the melodic death metal style with, you know. The, the themes of Viking, you know, vi like Viking history, Norse mythology, and, and so on and so forth. You know yeah. what I mean? But I never really figured that it was in the death metal style. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they never really incorporated blast beats or you know brutal chromatic riffs or anything like that. There was always that element of melody. You know yep. what I mean? So I, I would definitely categorize them in the melodic death metal category. Yep. For sure. I think it's a good point. Death metal. Yeah, yeah, and also bear in mind when we did the chart ten years ago, twelve years ago. My God, I'm so old. Um, <laughs> 
there, we weren't really talking about Viking metal quite yet, you know, and Monomarth was still kind of bubbling. They're not what they are now. I mean, they're a massive band, so we had to put them somewhere. But what we're going to do today, look at how amazing and sticky that board is. I love it. <laughs> New and improved. We're going to set a Monomarth off to the side. Lisa, do we have uh, some opinions out there? We always have opinions okay. out there. Okay. Lock horns. It is. It's why we're here. So at the top there, can you scroll down just a bit? It says, take a Monomarth off. Dustin Hicks says, take a Monomarth off. They're melodic death metal. I-A-R-11, remove a Monomarth. They're mellow death. Taylor Adjelkovich, pardon the pronunciation, a Monomarth has brought a huge audience to death metal that wouldn't normally look into it, making them one of the most important bands. Amon is amazing for showing people a different side of death metal and getting them into the genre as well as uh, as with any form of extreme entertainment, you need stepping stones for people. Fine, they're a gateway drug, sure. perhaps, <laughs> to the uh, more sure. brutal realm of death metal. And Steven Munoz says that uh, Amonomarth is for noobs. Okay, they're just as fake Viking metal as Man of War. <laughs> what? Well, I suppose they're all fake because exist anymore but anyway uh we love our fantasy in heavy metal so we'll go on believing so some consensus there yeah monomarth clearly much more accessible i think is a good word much tidier and they've become sort of you know they are a they are a heavy extreme band with these very folky melodies that uh you know is meant for sing-alongs yep. with a viking horn uh rather than uh whipping your hair in a windmill fashion. <laughs> what else, uh, Lisa? We got some other bands out there, maybe? Some bands on the chopping block. What? Jan or Jan Worthwine says, get rid of six feet under. Okay. Bradley is back from Exclaim. Good shout out to Exclaim there. Uh, Canadian Rag. I would take out six feet under. Simply put, no one would care if Barnes hadn't been in Cannibal Corpse. The music is nowhere near good, as good or influential, nor are his vocals. Uh, Miguel Cardenas is back, six feet under, not influential. And Alex Esau, or Esso says, I don't think Possessed or Six Feet Under belong here. Possessed does not have the legacy, aside from inventing the term death metal. And Larry Lalonde and Primus and Six Feet Under is just so bland. Lastly, Thrash Maniac 99, welcome back. Now for a controversial one, but I would remove Possessed because they were more thrash metal. And while they were influential to death metal, I think uh, would be more fittingly as a proto death metal band. I gotta breathe. Six Feet Under, what's Six your opinion? Um, I, I would personally say they really wouldn't quite be in the, in the categories that you know these other bands fit into, you know what I mean? Just because of the fact that like, I wouldn't say they're not influential, you know what I mean? They're not, they're a bad band, you know. Personally, I, I was never really into Six Feet Under, okay. but I, I wouldn't say they would fit in the death metal category to be on this list alongside Morbid Angel and Invader and DSI and Death Elves. Well, let me ask you a question: Should they be removed because they're not influential? Because they are a death metal band, yeah. correct? Thought, so are you making I, I, an I, argument they just weren't influential enough to be on the... Influential enough, okay. you know what I mean? And stylistically, they're, they're just a little, okay. a little too different. You know? Okay, so that's a bit different. So I'm on a Marth, not death metal, but six feet under, sorry, uh, <laughs> not enough disciples, I guess, to, uh, to qualify. And Possessed... Your thoughts yeah. on possessed, possessed, Dean? You know, like, like they, I think they're definitely an essential. I, like, I, I wouldn't put them as high as death, but they're, they have to be on this list for sure. Yeah. for sure. Because yes, they did coin the term death metal. Yes, they were one of the first bands to play that extreme style. You know what I mean? That early. You yeah. Know? But I wouldn't put them as high as death because they didn't have the same legacy. The thing I, 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 I don't disagree with what everyone has said. Uh, yeah. yeah, they gravitated to a slightly more thrash metal sound at times and they had a kind of more satanic black metal aesthetic totally. of course the classic burning cross on the back of, of seven churches mm -hmm. however i don't know where we put them if we take them off and i if we <laughs> if you take possessed off a heavy metal family tree are yeah. you going to be able to sleep at night i think is the real question so i would leave them there i might so pull I rank would. along with dean <laughs> we're pulling rank on you guys and we're going to leave them on there for now but if there's fierce disagreement Bring it on. Thrash Till Death 555 actually agrees that Possessed stays. And TTT Arms 1970 says Possessed easily stays there. Okay, so a bit of a split. We're leaving it on. Lisa, what? Let's get some other bands on this chart. Okay, let's do that. A lot to choose from. Today. Okay, okay. So we also always allow our uh, esteemed guest to add 
a band that you feel is missing from the chart? Who is that band for One you? Specifically, I would say is Suffocation. And the reason why I would say that is because, that, like, obviously they weren't a pioneering death metal band, but they were one of the first bands to popularize the blast beat. You know, they were one of the first bands to popularize the brutal, low, guttural vocal style. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that because of those two aspects of their, of their, you know, of their albums, of their songs and everything, that would make them an essential band, I think. And I would yeah. definitely put them over a band, you know, as much as I think, you know, like Nile and Dying Fetus should be on here, I think that suffocation is a little more, more essential, for sure. Well, lucky for you, Oh, here we go. Look what we made. <laughs> We're going to put a suffocation oh, yeah. magnet up there. I don't think you're going to get a lot of disagreement on suffocation yeah. being added. Again, we had limited space, and I think we, when we made the chart, we kind of wanted to spread the wealth yeah. a bit sort of geographically and in terms of era and stuff like that, but I, I think you're probably going to get some allies. And here we go, Nick. Adaviano is back. How in the fuck did you guys miss <laughs> suffocation? Capitalized. Effigy of the Forgotten is arguably in the top five death metal albums, period. They, along with Cannibal Corpse, also showed that death metal could appear outside of the Tampa and California areas in the mid-80s, early 90s. Good point. Grant Lazenby, Suffocation are a massive influence on so many modern death metal bands. They are gods. And G.G. Bodeth says, in all caps, once again, yeah. death metal fans, like, I forgot as just, well it's this fucking caps yeah. lock all day <laughs> on the death metal episode. Suffocation yeah. is a must because their introduction so of the slam things, riff. Yeah. There we go. And it just goes on. Michael Montoya, their influence has been huge over the last 10 years. The deathcore movement was really spawned by bands like Suffocation. Suffocation's influence can be seen much more in newer bands than most of the death metal bands on this list. They helped invent the breakdown. Yeah. Good point. I agree. which has become one of the most important elements in modern metal and hardcore today. And lastly, Metal DP. That's not a reason to include them. Deathcore is a fucking cancer upon music. <laughs> Breakdowns are fucking garbage. Yeah, okay. That's something well. I would say about suffocation. Not only there's the blast, there's the guttural vocal style, but that's something I also forgot too, is, is, is that, that beatdown element. It wasn't sure. quite a dun 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 dun, -dun yeah. down or anything like that. Sure. But for a band to like do a slower dun 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 dun, you know, kind of a thing, to do that that early, you know what I mean? Like like even on Effigy of the Forgotten, you know yep. I mean? like like ninety one, nobody was really doing that kind of beat down yep. stuff, you know, in death metal, you know. It wasn't quite a death core breakdown, you know what I mean? I think that's something that evolves over a number of years, sure. but I think they were the first band to incorporate that. We don't sure. always love the children we spawn all the time, but I think we must recognize the fact that yeah. uh, they started something and they innovated something, whether we all like where it went went. Yeah. the kind of breakdown uh, musical element, um, that's another story. Justin Harvey, a lot of these bands these days try to imitate suffocation, but not one of them comes to close to what they do. And lastly, we give Oscar Bras Brosso the last word. Please put suffocation on the list or else I'll jump off a cliff. Oscar, don't do it, buddy. We got it. <laughs> suffocation is right there. Uh, stay safe. Okay, Lisa, what else? We've had the guest choice. We've added suffocation. Bit of a recap. We've removed Amon Amarth, two Mellow Death, two Viking. Six Feet Under has been removed. Not enough influence, although a death metal band. And uh, Chuck Schuldiner uh, rules the world. What's up? Well, I think you need to get your marker out. Okay. And start adding some bands from the fan chat. Where is my marker? Right we'll find a you. marker. Is it behind me? Yes. Where is it? I can't find <laughs> it. Yeah, it's on the, uh... This set is oh my goodness. new and exciting. That Lost Check out. This is the fattest white Sharpie ever made, and we're going to go to town on this board. And you can start by writing the letter B for Bolt Thrower. Bolt Thrower. <laughs> Here we go. Wyatt Wilker. You should put Bolt Thrower on the chart. They were a great band that contributed to the early death metal scene. As far as I'm aware, there aren't very many death metal bands who gave lyrics about tabletop games. Fair enough. Horror Master Bolt Thrower is a must if you're going to talk about classic death metal bands. Bolt Thrower is your band, period. Ricky Caraman says that Bolt Thrower needs to be on this list because Bolt Thrower, uh, because it's Bolt fucking Thrower. End of story. Okay. What's your opinion on Bolt Thrower as um, I as I, I write I, them I on would, the board? I, I think they, they should get some credit for sure. Okay. I would, I would definitely put them in this category for sure. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Like, uh, I would say that they, they definitely had that groove element, but they were still a death metal band. You know, they, they, every, every, everything about them stylistically is still, still death metal. You yep. know, it's down-tuned, it's heavy, 
you know what I mean? And, and they were they were a band doing what they were doing early on, too. Yeah. So, yeah. We got Hari, uh, Desika Chari is back. Uh, Bolt Thrower should be on the chart without a doubt. They've arguably, arguably been the most consistent death metal band with regard to quality from their first album to their disbandment. Realms of Chaos, War Master, and The Fourth Crusade are all great albums and testament to their mastery of the guitar riff. And lastly, Full Metal Guy says that uh, Bolt Thrower are also one of the great early bands that stayed consistent throughout their career until they broke up last week. Sad face. There we go. Bolt for right on the board. Look at that. Got my white marker. Isn't it beautiful? You want to put a little RIP under there? Oh, we could. We yeah, could. We could. We could. It's fairly recent. Yeah. But yeah, it is. Beautiful. Okay. Lisa, what's next? What are the people saying? More bands. Okay. Dustin Hicks. Add incantation. Not only are they still around and putting out solid material, they're one of the most imitated bands in death metal today. Dovidas Auglis. Incantation started that filthy death metal, which influenced new wave of death metal, and it was slower than obituary, which is hard to do with the Tardy Brothers. And Bradley is back. I'd add the other quintessential I, death metal band, Incantation, onward to Golgotha is untouchable and was just darker than what was coming out of the time, helping birth the cavernous death metal that Canada is pumping out these days. Okay, we got a mitochondrion, Orok, and Phobocosm, etc. The already included I band definitely deserves to be there. Immolation were similarly dark, and it's worth noting that both bands came from the northeast part of the USA, where worse weather might have darkened their disposition compared to sunny Florida. It's never, it's true, I never knew what to make of those Floridian death metal bands in tight white tennis shorts. That was confusing. Okay, Incantation. Yeah. What's your opinion on yeah, Incantation? Uh, I really like Incantation just because of the fact that they, they, they have like just a really raw and I would say dark style, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Onward to Golgotha is like a really awesome album. I really yeah. love it, you know what I mean? And it just, everything about the album just sounds so raw and it just like, it, it's just, there is that speed, but it's, it's not so focused on speed. There's, it's, it still gets slow, it still gets dark and doomy, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I just personally, that album specifically is something I still to this day really enjoy, for sure. Excellent, okay. We're getting along so well on Lockhorns, except for Possessed was the closest we got to any sort of <laughs> confrontation. I think they should stay. Come on, we need a debate here, people. Okay, back to the board, Stealth's Metal should add Necrophagia for releasing the first death metal album a month prior to death scream bloody gore? Good point. Guitar Bro 221, you guys need to put Necrophagia on. They are an early contributor to the sound and had a huge influence on the genre. And Poker Naze simply states Necrophagia. What do you think about Necrophagia? Definitely uh, an early band, you're right, like they were there. I can't speak too much on this yep. because like I, like I never really got into them, like I've always heard the name, but they were just one of those bands, you know, I, I never personally got around to listening to it to tell you the truth, so yep. I don't want to give a false opinion on, on them or anything like okay. that, so. Yeah, you know but, what um, I'm do? I'm just gonna stoke the flames here a bit. We're not gonna put Necrophagia up because I'm not convinced that they're all that influential. We take the criteria of that, that just, bands on this list need to have a substantial yeah. influence, I think, to I, 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 Because I, I would never really say they had like, that same level of popularity and impact like early on bands like Possessed had, yeah. you know, or Death, you know what I mean? So no. I, I would say it would be kind of a tough call just putting, uh, putting them on there, truthfully. Okay. okay, so we're pausing on Necrophagia, setting them aside. Okay, Lisa, we've got Colin Lakativa is back. Please add Entombed. Left Hand Path is an absolute clap. Oh my god. Yes. I just want to like stop the show and listen to <laughs> Left Hand Path, but we can't. Bringing the buzzsaw element to death metal guitar sound. Seminal Swedish death metal and Ma Ma says that Entombed has got to go up there. We don't even need to explain why you wouldn't be on this stream if you didn't know why. Mm -hmm. For shame. I think we need Entombed. You an we Entombed should. fan? Love, yeah, Left Hand Path, of course, you know, and yep. then bigger albums too, like Wolverine Blues, that obviously wouldn't get too categorized with these other bands, but uh, Love and Tuned for sure. Now, you know, there could be a counter argument here that, you know, the subsequent Entombed records, they kind of got into the what's called Different. the death and roll kind yeah. of sound. So, you know, there's some merit to that, but I think that 
unlike necrophagia, I think we could make the argument that, you know, left-hand path, you know, early earache sound, uh, that, that distinctive Swedish that is, guitar it's, it's sound. It's the guitar tone. You know, like that, mean, that really was, had a huge impact on a lot of things. You know yeah. what I mean? Really did, you know. At that time, it was, yeah, it was, it was beauty to our ears. So for that reason, we're going to add Entombed, and Stefano Mercatelli agrees that Entombed is a must, and so does Greg Shepard. I love Entombed. But they're not going on here. Death and roll is their legacy. Okay, we got one uh, counter argument up there. Um, and so we'll see. If there's anybody else out there that really, truly believes that Entombed doesn't belong, uh, that they don't warrant uh, being included because they aren't influential enough or maybe didn't stay the course uh, with death metal, bring it on, everybody. Okay, Lisa. Who else? Where There's are we going next? I'm seeing uh, a love for Gorguts. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I have a lot of love for Gorguts. Me too. Yeah. End of story. What do you think about Gorguts? Um, I, I think they're a little too more on the experimental side to be on this list specifically. You know what I mean? Like Obscura is one of my favorite albums. You know sure. what I mean? Even even considered that in those albums too. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, but to, to put them specifically with death metal again, like I'm, I'm like. The, in, in terms of this, the straight up death metal style, you know what I mean, that these bands are popular for, I'm not sure if I would really consider them to be just death metal. They're, they're, right. they, they added too many experimental elements in their music, you know what I mean, that made them unique, yep. that made them popular, but to just put them in the same category as just death metal bands, I'm not entirely sure, Sure, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a cursing and a, bless, a blessing, I suppose, to be a band with such diverse abilities. Obviously, Luke yep. LeMay, a great Canadian musician and a friend. Uh, I grew up on those early Gorguts records, but I suppose it's true. I mean, he kind of, uh, he really expanded out and did some different things. Yeah, definitely. Um, so maybe we should we should park Gorguts for that reason. I'm having, a tr I'm having difficulty with that. I mean, yeah. they were such a part of that quintessential, yeah. you know, late '80s, early '90s roadrunner moment, mm -hmm. uh, and those early, you know, um, considered dead, edge of sanity. They were so, uh, you know, meaningful to me. But let's yeah. see what the board says. Alex Walsh, Gorguts have a very influential impact. For fuck's sake, they should be up there for influencing and naming. Uh, Obscura alone. Interesting yeah. point. They're the German band Obscura. Charlie Zero X Zero says that uh, Gorguts need to be there. Hugely technical and avant-garde. See, and that's the thing. Like, I think they're more along those lines of technical and avant-garde. Trash you know Maniac I mean? 99. Gorguts uh, fit better in tech death. Uh, Ron Green says that uh, I see Gorguts more as a tech death band. So I think we're going to introduce the question mark. And I think we got to get Gorguts at least uh, up on the board because clearly uh, a lot of people care yep. one way or the other. Okay. Because, like, to be fair, like, stylistically, they're death metal. Everything right. about them is, but this, it's just the riffing, you know, the, the way Luke wrote his riffs, you know what I yep. mean? Even, even the bass parts, you know, like, slapping like a madman and everything, sure. you know what I mean? Sure. Just the sounds he made, everything. It's just, it, it, sure. it was so different. It was sure. So new. And while I'm at it, a little bit of housekeeping, I suppose, if we're going to have the death metal bands that people have mentioned, but maybe we just don't feel they quite have the legacy or uh, influence to be part of the pantheon because this is a pantheon of death metal gods, uh, we'll put uh, Necrophagia on the side for the moment. Lisa. Uh, wow. Let's talk about Bloodbath. Oh. Can we do that? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I needed a quiet moment. Yes, Bradley says, I'd argue Bloodbath deserve a place on the tree for reinvigorating an interest in the old school sound with a new generation. The pedigree of the players plus their names and roles in the metal scene as a whole really served as a platform from which to shout. Nicely put. Thrash Till Death 555. As awesome as Bloodbath are, they don't really bring anything new to the table. They play death metal in the realm of Entombed and mix that with some Florida death metal. Uh, and scrolling down, we've got Horror Master, OMG, Blab, Blood Bath has to be one of my favorite death metal uh, bands. I mean, the power and energy the band delivers just thinking about it just gives me chills. You And you lose, as opposed to you lose, says that Bloodbath are a must. And lastly, Juan M. Q. says that Bloodbath embraced the whole aesthetic and concept of death metal. Some of the best death metal musicians have been there. I mean, Dan Swano is a death metal icon 
that uh, forged the genre. Your thoughts? My thoughts. Well, I'll, I'll be. I'll just say straight up. You know, Bloodbath is actually one of my favorite, all-time favorite death metal bands. You know, yeah. the, Fath the Fathomless Mastery. You know. Uh, Nightmares Made Flesh. Those are like my two favorite death metal albums, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. I, I love, I, I listen to them every day. You know, I really do love those two albums. But, but I, I wouldn't really put them as an essential death metal band, just because they did come around kind of later on. You know what I mean? And they're still kind of in that specifically Swedish death metal category. You know what I mean? I, I think that even, even Entombed being on here is kind of a toss up. But I think that if we're gonna have Entombed on here, mm -hmm. I wouldn't entirely say Bloodbath should be on there as much as I love them personally. This is a tough I mean? one because both you and I love those records. <clears throat> I think those Bloodbath records are some of the, the finest death metal records that have ever been made. No, and fantastic. yet, love them. for better or worse, the band occupies that strange world of being kind of almost super group, almost kind of retrospective. Yeah. So I'm going to put them on the side. You should, should put be, them yeah. on the side. I would say, yeah. Most people think that they are too new. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a line so it's clear uh, that this is hard. I'm gonna lose sleep over this, yeah, because of how crushing and talented those records are. It hurts, but pain is part of the game of death metal, I suppose. Because clerical conspiracy says no bloodbath, not influential, not early enough. Death metal is not about supergroups. It's right, maybe a little too late, too nostalgic. Too much of a super group, for better or worse. Um, TV Bleak says no bloodbath. Utter shit. Ooh, real death metal for now. <laughs> Has to be bands like Dead Congregation, Grave, Miasma, and the like, keeping true <laughs> to the underground. And Banger Rules. Thank you. It's probably a staff member. Why should <laughs> we talk about bloodbath and ignore legendary bands like Massacre? That's true. Massacre is important. Yeah. Let's hear about Massacre if other people want them on the board. Yeah, they are early. They had a sound. Were they influential enough? I think we can maybe park Say them. a little, little too more along the thrash lines, honestly. Maybe, Truthfully, maybe. you know, like just, Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't quite put them in death metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well let's maybe Our put them, sure. or maybe here. What do you think? They're a little, yeah, I'd say. Maybe here, okay. More further out than bands like Bloodbath. Bold Bath, moves. Metropagia. Bold sure. moves. You know, this is going to be front page <laughs> New York Times tomorrow. <laughs> Massacre is not death metal. Okay, Lisa, are we doing more bands or are we going to move on to something new? There are so many bands, including some new bands okay. that people want to talk about. Okay. New bands. Okay, here we go. Raphael Fireblade, the band Jungle Rot belong in this list because Kill on Command has made a breakthrough uh, in 2011. They're still making death metal, uh, keeping the death metal genre alive. Uh, Michael Montoya is back. He says that Cattle Decapitation have been pushing the genre forward for years now. The last two albums have really changed the direction of the genre, adding weird, clean vocals and more groovy uh, riffs. So, Dean, yeah. do you have an opinion, first of all, on Jungle Rot? Jungle Rot? I like I like Jungle Rot. You know what I mean? Like, a, I think they're they're really good live band too. I've seen them live a number of times. You know, yeah. but I, I wouldn't quite put the I, I wouldn't call them essential enough. You know yeah. What I mean? In the death metal category, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're one of those bands like like they've they've been in the trenches. They've been around a long time. You know what I mean? But I, but I wouldn't quite call them. You know, an essential death metal band or an influential death yeah. metal band. You know, even though I do like them personally. Yeah. You know, and and I, I would say the same for Cattle Decapitation because they're they're too along the lines of of the grindcore style. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even though you could argue, of course, it is death metal. There there are death metal elements in their music. Yeah. But um, same thing. Like they're not quite essential enough of a band. Right. You know, I quite you know at the, at the likes of like Morbid Angel. You know, Obituary, yeah, yeah. Deicide. You know. Yeah. I, I think they're just a little, little too new, you know what I mean, in terms yeah, of... Yeah, and of course, Cattle Decapitation did come up in our uh, our episode on Grindcore, because yep. they kind of... They're uh, more in that category. They're more in I that category, sure. and you know, it's no disrespect to Cattle Decapitation, yeah. because I love them. <laughs> they're a great band, and uh, clearly are going very strong, but whether they, they belong here or not... And you're right, I mean, Jungle Rot, they've been around, uh, and, you know, but it's just a question of whether they've had that influence and I and I and I keep coming back to that word of influence because I think it's so essential yep. to this list because otherwise it just becomes uh, 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 the wild west out here and it's just a list of bands I'm of <laughs> thinking that the chat wants uh, cattle to be on the death grind chart that okay they need, they're a little they need more. their own chart maybe it's another, okay. Okay. another episode well, we, we'll, yeah. we'll put them over here 
I'd say, yeah, for sure. Because they deserve to be... Yeah, I think they've... You know, they're obviously younger than a lot of the bands on this list. I'm going to just shorten yeah. it there. But, um, you know, within that span of time, I think they've done amazing things and, and clearly uh, built a huge following for themselves. Uh, okay, back to the board. We have no consensus on Massacre, I hate to say. Okay, well, let's see. <laughs> That's why we're here. We're locking horns. Non-consensus might be a good thing. Stefano Mercatelli is back. No death band has ever come close to Massacre. Uh, Kailash says that Massacre need an honorable mention. Only one good album, but huge at the time. Dustin Hicks, Massacre were great, but not terribly influential and not enough material. I think I would agree with yeah. Dustin. I think he nails it there. And Rail Camp 09 uh, says, fuck yeah, Massacre from beyond. I know. Man, that was a scary album when I was... 14? Something like that? What were my parents thinking? From Beyond is one of the most brutal albums ever. Rick Ross's riffing is mind-blowing. Yeah, man. Rick Ross, Leprosy, yeah. Death. That is go. one of my <laughs> favorites. So, um, Massacre, I, I think they... We're going to keep them in the question mark because I think, although early, like we're talking like... like before the human yeah. race started, they were creating a brutal sound. Um, didn't have the staying power. And really, whatever Massacre accomplished from an influence perspective, I think got kind of overshadowed. Because of Rick. By, by, by Chuck and, and Rick continuing uh, in, in death. So I'm going to make the argument that Massacre's legacy lives partly in the early albums of that band. I'm talking uh, Scream Bloody Gore and um, uh, Leprosy in particular. Okay, Charlie Zero X Zero says that Cataclysm needs to leave. I, I, I think, yeah. No I legacy, think. too yeah. generic. More <laughs> towards mellow death lately, with an emphasis on lately. Yep. That's a pretty new development in that band. And Charlie Zero X Zero, are you really not going to add atheist? <laughs> oh, you. Uh, and keep Cataclysm. I don't uh, think atheist. Cataclysm got talked enough about yet. Because okay, I, I, I okay. Think they should kind of be pushed away a bit. All right. Truthfully, as much as I love them still. Right. You know what I mean? So are we saying that they're not death metal fully, or are we saying that they're death metal and <laughs> they just don't have enough influence? Okay, I'm going to put them yeah. here. It's hard. Canadian band won a Juno. Congrats, guys. You fucking earned that. <laughs> I actually like the latest record, even though it's more melodic, yeah. but that's another story. This is an episode about death metal, but you're agreeing that... Uh, yeah, Cataclysm of course. Doesn't belong. You know what I mean? Of course, early on, you know, albums like like Sorcery and Temple of Knowledge. You know what I mean? Like there, there isn't really a, mel a melodic element, you know, in those albums. You know what I mean? But yep. what they incorporated later on, I mean, that's kind of what made them popular. Versus so making is going more towards the death metal style, uh, melodic death metal style. Yeah. So I wouldn't quite put them into with death metal. You know what I mean? Even though they did start out as a death metal band. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And pretty distinct sound when you think about it. They they do kind of really sound like themselves, which is yep. a hard thing to achieve. No, as like you know, know Lisa, we've thing. lost the board. We're having Went some somewhere. technical difficulties <laughs> on my side of the planet. So how about we start the discussion? Uh, I know we want to have about does pure death metal exist? Is it only subgenres now? Yep. You know, where are we going with this? And Good. then I'll get back to the board and we'll do our final plans. Yeah, we're, we're coming back here. We'll take back. care of that. No problem. Uh, we'll roll with it. So, yeah. So from from perspective of quote-unquote pure death metal, yeah. is is this, does it continue? Mm -hmm. Is it more of a of, of, of a moment in time? What, what's your perspective? It, it continues, you know what I mean? Like, like because... Bands, you know, like so many of them on this list, like Deicide, like Vader, like Suffocation, you know, Obituary, Cannibal Corpse, you know, they've, so they were started out as such influential bands, and to this day, they're still pumping out quality material, quality albums, everything, right. you know what I mean? So, yeah. And because yeah. of the fact that they're so still going and still going strong, and that they haven't sold out, you know, to like the new styles of music, new styles of metal, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's what makes them really special, you know what I mean? The fact that they're still doing what they're doing, they're, they're yeah. still sticking to their roots, okay. you know what I mean? So Dean's perspective on this is that um, death metal is alive and well, and even though we have sort of countless 
uh, smaller branches coming off yep. the, the tree. We've got blackened death metal. We've got technical death metal. We've yep. got death grind, and it goes on and on and on. Uh, there, there's an argument uh, that, that it's alive and well. I mean, it's true. I mean, I guess we shouldn't close the door because yep. there will always be bands that are sort of uh, staying true, yep. uh, as it were, to the, to, to, to the death metal sound. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that for now. Yeah. Lisa, we got the board back. Are we, are we in business? We're back. We in, open for business? We're back in business. People okay. want us to get rid of Nile. They want us to add atheists. We are, we've got a lot of chat. I want to talk about pestilence and decapitated. If anyone wants to join me on a conversation about those fucking killer bands, uh, let's hear it. But okay, there's a lot of bands. Let's just pile on the future of death metal. Corey Che Miguelagot says that, I realize the tree is getting complicated, but death metal easily has the same amount of variety in musical history as black metal with a much larger worldwide fan base. I think that's a good point. Might want to uh, do a first wave, second wave thing and branch out like you did for black metal. After that, tech death, slam brutal death metal. You could even do a fusions branch with death grind, black and death, death core, death and roll, death doom, symphonic with flesh god apocalypse and septic flesh, if you really want to branch out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's complicated. Um, what else we got? We got Nick Ottoviano, okay. To my comment about decapitated, Diz Chu says decapitated or tech death. Fine. Apart from ruling, I agree with you, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Leonard Reimstein, pestilence, yes. Decap, no. Sadly, I think pestilence gets forgotten, perhaps because they didn't uh, keeping, uh, keep putting out records, but I think the first few were uh, magnificent. Uh, Grant uh, Lesenby, pestilence, yes, but Decap is uh, too new. Those are my selfish bands. Do you have opinions on either of them? Yeah, I, 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 like, I, but see, but I, I, I go back to the same argument about bands like like Bloodbath, for example. Yep. You know what I mean? They didn't quite have the same impact as these bands, but they're certainly an honorable mention. Honorable yep. mention for sure. Yep. You know so, what I mean? I would definitely say. I'm gonna put Decapitated here because obviously they're not quite in death metal, and just so we get them on the board. <laughs> Damn it. Pardon the writing. That sort of says pestilence. Go. <laughs> um, we got them up there. Billy Miller. I've seen Decapitated Live. You need them. They kill. Spheres of Madness. Look up that if you're not head Of course. Amazing uh, track off uh, Winds of Creation, I think. Then you're fucked. Trolls Tornmark says you can put pestilence on the board. If you also put up Atheist, uh, Full Metal Guy, pestilence is essential. I mean, Atheist, I would put over here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with those early um, piece of time, yeah, the early records. Questionable presence. For really, sure. yeah. um, really proggy, if yeah, you will. Definitely. You like, because because they they came out and became popular like you know that kind of like early '90s time. You know what I mean? The same time around other you know Florida bands like DSI and yep. Morbid Angel and what have you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but but they they had too much of that that tech element. You know what I mean? And yep. they were one of the first bands to be doing what they're doing for sure. Yeah. Uh, same thing. You know, I wouldn't. I, I would put them on this side and not quite. Fair enough with these other bands. Yeah, sure. agreed. Brendan McLaughlin, Armored Angel. Okay, we're getting to some. Uh, you want to obscure Slaughter Lord? Look that one up. L Armored Angel, Australia, 1982. Maybe not influential, but definitely doing death metal very early. Bands. Uh, Bands doing death metal have existed outside North America and Europe for just as long. Lisa. This is a message to everyone who's asking us to add Dying Fetus. You can't read me. They're right here. <laughs> and that is a testimony to how good their logo is. Even a discerning death metal audience can't read the Dying Fetus logo. There yeah, you go. Maybe we we'll the move them up. up there. Yeah, we got the old one up. Maybe that's why. There you go. Dying Fetus. It's obvious. <laughs> uh, Armored Angel. A good point. I mean, we could go on. I mean, we could get yeah. into, you know, Sarcophago, a Slaughter Lord, I remember, was a, yeah. you know, an early Australian band. Uh, we could make the argument, you know, Corner's early records perhaps uh, qualify. I mean, it kind of goes on, right? Yeah, of course. There's so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Definitely. a four hour episode, Lisa. What do you <laughs> say? Wrap it up. Okay. Some people do want to talk about Black Dahlia. 
Some people want to talk about Black Dahlia. They do. Okay, fair enough. Black Dahlia, big band, doing yeah. really well, really pro prolific. Uh, your thoughts on Black Dahlia? Black Dahlia, uh, I don't know. I like think they're a little too later along the, along the line, you know what I mean, too melodic, you know what I mean? I, I wouldn't quite yeah. put them with death metal, you know right. what I mean? Right, interesting. I so I think we're drawing, I mean, I think I would agree with you. Um, and again, just because they aren't in death metal doesn't isn't a discredit to to them or their music. It's just maybe they don't quite belong here. Uh, BDM. Yeah. I think that um, yeah, I, would agree. I think we're establishing. I think maybe one thing we left out in our sort of characteristics of of death metal. You know, there's some exceptions in here. That was a fucking melodic band, and they're the legend. Yeah. But there's a certain amount of like commitment to dissonance and a melodicism yeah. that I think we're, we're talking about here, right? Definitely. Yeah, I would um, say. Because in recent years, the melody and the brutality have come together yeah. in so many different ways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But with death metal, uh, yeah, because because even with death, like like melody and, and harmony was present in the music, but it was never the focal point. You know, you could yeah. you could you could have that same argument about so many different bands. You know what I mean? Right. Like. I would say like like Bloodbath, for example, you know what I mean? There's a lot of songs on the Fathomless Mastery, for example, yeah. that have a lot of good melody, you know, and right. catchiness. Sure. But it's still death metal. It, it, yeah. it's, it's even though it has melodic elements, sure, it, yeah. it's still everything stylistically about it is. Death I mean metal, we could get into mean? the musicology of it. There's a certain chromatic sound and yep. you know, it's it's it, there isn't always a resolution. Maybe that's what we're talking about here. You know, it doesn't always yep. land you in the sweet spot to sort of wrap up the story Definitely. so to speak yeah. uh, we could go on about that but I think what we're saying here is there's a certain there's a certain dissonance there's a certain a melodicism to this yeah. music and that's what maybe at the core uh, and and let's not forget like it's about brutal imagery and, yeah. and and a brutal aesthetic and you know yeah there's brutality here but you know if you start to look at some of these bands it's not really part of their their makeup. Definitely, yeah. Okay. You, you, you even make the same argument with like Deicide, for example. The Stench of Redemption has has so has so much so much good lead playing on that album. Right. Ralph Santala is such an amazing player. Like sure. songs like The Lord's Sedition. Yeah. You know, Homage for Satan. Like just like the the melody lines and the solos he does. Like they're so melodic and they're so good. And but it's still in the death metal style. You just got dinged, buddy. Mind. Dean got dinged. What's up, Lisa? I have to squeeze this in here because they're Canadian. Uh huh. Cryptopsy. Uh -huh. First of all, I love the line Magro of Mivo. If you black you had Black Daily on there, then you have to add Van Halen. That's funny. <laughs> Billy Miller, the Black Daily Murder, is the best death metal band, but they're like extreme metal. Blender. Uh, okay, Cryptopsy. Eli Unger, Crypto Cryptopsy should be added because of the album None So Vile is the best death metal album ever. Yep. And our Canada's classic death metal god alongside Gorguts. Lama on Foot says that put uh, Cryptopsy on the list. FFS. What is FFS for fuck's sake? For fuck's sake. <laughs> See, I just learned that. Uh, five sample whore. Three or five. Yeah, that, I'm not going to do that. Uh, yay, Cryptopsy getting no love is killing my faith in humanity. Yeah. I love Cryptopsy. Are they influential enough? Influential enough? They, I would say. They were, they're more influential than a lot of these bands on this More list. influential than Cataclysm? In the death metal spe style specifically, I'd say, yeah. Yes! For sure. I would, Let's I would add Cryptopsy. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a great idea. They deserve it. I would say, yeah. This is a brutal band, people. And Definitely. talk about commitment to just utter, like, just that, that sort of melodic messiness we love about death metal. Absolutely. Uh, they're on there. Good job. We got, we got Cryptopsy on the... Yeah, if anything, I think this episode is revealed much like our black metal episode is that there's other branches we need to tackle, particularly uh, blackened death metal is yeah. up for uh, grabs as well as uh, I think especially actually the, the, the tech death um, subgenre when we get into discussions of bands like uh, Black Dahlia Murder and Decapitated and, and Gore Guts. Uh, those are three big bands that clearly need to be somewhere on the heavy metal chart. Comment of the week? New unlock horns. We've got a fancy logo. We've got a fancy set. We've got new markers. We've got prizes. Okay. So we're going to do a comment of the week every week. If it made us laugh, uh, if we learned something, yeah. or if I just like your 
your screen name, that'll work. Lisa's pulling rank here. Are we doing one this week, Lisa? Uh, we are going to do this one okay. this week. And I, uh, I think the winner is from Wyatt Wilcher, who added Bolt Thrower, just because uh, he pointed out the tabletop games reference. Right. And that's the first time we talked about that on the show. Fair enough. So it's my per next week, though, right? My, I, good one. My personal favorite was if you add Black Dahlia Murder, you've got to add Van Halen. I, I thought like, that was pretty funny. Like that, that was two, funny, yeah. Uh, two winners. Two winners. Two winners. It's a split vote. It's so Canadian. Uh, okay, there we go. We got comment of the week. Um, and Lisa, I guess you're going to get in touch with these people and let them know how to claim their uh, their, their massive prize. I'm going to do my best. Good. Excellent. Okay. Find me. All right. Dean Arnold. Yeah. Thanks for your time, Thanks buddy. Thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, Seriously. thank you. Really thank appreciate you so it. That was fun. That was a lot of work. A lot of fun. <laughs> that was a lot of work. A lot yeah, of bands. Sure. Uh, clearly a genre that a lot of people uh, care about. Thanks also to the team off camera. As always, Dean, Lisa, Daniel, Andrew, Craig, and Anvesha is here with us as well. The show will be archived and you missed us live. Uh, make sure you come back next week. Uh, Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Apple Music. Yes, we're the official uh, metal curators over at Apple Music. We return next week with something completely different. We've always envisioned Lockhorns uh, uh, being a show about something much more than just hair-splitting subgenres. We're going to be doing a panel discussion on sexism in metal. Very important. I'm looking forward to that. And we're going to have Natalie Zed and Priya Panda, who have been on the show uh, before, uh, joining me for that episode. And keep watching in the weeks ahead. We've got Black and Death Metal coming up. And our first Essential Albums debate on... Power metal, somebody mentioned Man of War. Let's take off our shirts, get out your hammer, <laughs> and let's do some power metal. So, we'll see you next week. Thanks again for joining us on Lockhorns. <laughs>